In the Trump administration, NASA outlined their plan of building a permanent moon base, which will aid their continual efforts of a deep space project. Sit tight and enjoy how NASA plans to achieve the base on the lunar surface. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any other stories coming your way. NASA is forging new pathways to aid its Artemis program, which will land humans on the moon by 2024. However, the agency just offers its first plan, indicating what a United States lunar presence may look like once the plan is achieved. The plan is filed in a 13-page report submitted last year in the National Space Council, which is an advisory group to the previous President Donald Trump and chaired by Vice President Mike Pence. Interestingly, the new Biden administration has been vague on NASA plans, therefore we're left with what's left of Trump's administration. The report was titled, NASA's Plan for Sustained Lunar Exploration and Development, and it further summarizes the blueprint of NASA's plan for justifying and accomplishing the 2024 moon landing. Inclusively, you can also say that the report also reveals the possibility that the United States could accomplish a long-term presence on the lunar surface with stations in the lunar orbit. NASA Administrator Jim Bridstein said in a statement released with the report, After 20 years of continuous living in low Earth orbit, we're now ready for the great challenge of space exploration, which is the development of a sustained presence on and around the Moon. And for years to come, Artemis will serve as our North Star as we continue to work forward and work toward even greater exploration of the Moon, where we will demonstrate key elements needed for the first human mission to Mars. The file contained a number of plans, including an Artemis base camp. It said that this program is meant to be a long-term base for lunar exploration, most likely located at the moon's south pole, Shackleton Crater. The Artemis base camp would be a lunar foundation surface habitat at Shackleton Crater that could house up to four astronauts for weekly visits. The facility would also need several infrastructures, including for power, communications, and waste disposal. Even more importantly, a radiation shielding and a landing pad. This base could also serve a fortified site for testing out new techniques, turning local materials into resources like water, and developing new power and construction technologies while intrinsically dealing with rather annoying lunar dust and creating a safe space for the inevitable long and cold lunar nights. The NASA Artemis program proposes to roll out a base camp on the moon in bits, using an orbiting gateway station, rovers, landers, and habitats. And the Artemis base camp would be supported by two mobility systems, including a lunar terrain vehicle to assist astronauts' movement across the lunar surface, and a habitable mobility platform that will facilitate trips away from the base for up to 45 days. And as you know, NASA currently visions a number of Mars surface missions where the lunar base camp will stand to reduce risk and possibly even reduce travel time due to its rotations. The report stated that mobility is a major part of the Artemis base camp, and that robust mobility systems will be required to explore and develop the Moon. The same is true for Mars, making the habitable mobility platform a particularly important element, as we will need a similar type of vehicle to explore the Red Planet. The report inclusively outlines a specific plan to assist in using a Moon orbiting way station named the Gateway as a site for Mars practice missions. The practice missions could be models where a team of four astronauts in the Gateway will learn the duration of a journey to Mars. Also, it will include visits from a landing crew of two on the Moon's surface, furthermore, another long orbital stay to outline the mission's future timeline. The report has it that the missions will be by far the longest duration human deep space missions in history. They will be the first operational tests of the readiness of our long duration deep space systems and of the split crew operations that are vital to our approach for the first human Mars missions. The long-term vision for Artemis plans plenty of specific moon science and also prepares for Mars exploration. Furthermore, the report includes a plan for setting up several networks. It is stated, in time, Artemis Base Camp might include a hopper and that could deliver science and technology payloads all over the moon, which could be operated by the crew at Artemis Base Camp and refueled using locally sourced propellant. A lunar far side radio telescope could also be remotely emplaced and operated from Artemis Base, which is sort of a, like a backyard radio telescope at our first encampment on the moon. For a note, NASA's base camp Artemis on the moon will require a number of essentials like water, light, and elevation. 
NASA will make sure that American astronauts in 2024 will take their first steps near the moon's south pole, where there is frozen water, including extreme darkness, which could propel NASA's Artemis lunar program and could also plunge the agency into deep space. Scientists as well as engineers are currently aiding NASA to determine the precise location of the Artemis base camp and among the numerous objections, NASA must take into account before choosing a specific location are two key features. The site must be positioned close to continuous sunlight, which will power the base and moderate extreme temperature threats. It must also provide simple access to areas of complete darkness that hold water ice that could provide necessary materials for survival. As the South Pole region possesses lots of well-illuminated areas, some parts see more light than others. Scientists have envisioned that at some higher elevations, especially on crater rims, astronauts could be exposed to longer periods of light. However, the bottoms of some deep craters are covered in perpetual darkness due to the fact that sunlight at the South Pole is at a low angle that only brushes the rims of the craters. These particularly unique lighting conditions are connected with the Moon's position and with the topography of the South Pole region. Much different from Earth's 23.5 degree tilt, the Moon tilts only at some 1.5 degrees on its axis. As a result, none of the Moon's hemispheres tilt noticeably towards or away from the Sun throughout the year, as it does on Earth. But this phenomenon determines how our seasons here are, either sunny or dark. This inclusively means that the far position of the Sun in the sky at the lunar poles doesn't really change during the day. For example, at any time of the year, if a person should stand on the hilltop near the lunar south pole during the daylight hours, they'll see the sun moving across the horizon as it breezes the surface, like a flashlight brushing through a surface. Brent Gary, a geologist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland said, It's such a dramatic terrain down there. Gary currently works with engineers on something of a virtual reality tour of the moon's south pole to make astronauts, scientists, and mission planners understand the exotic environment of the region as they get ready to send humans back to the lunar surface. A base campsite will no doubt require lots of light, and it's important for astronauts to be able to take short trips into permanently dark craters. Scientists positively expect that these shadowed craters will contain reservoirs of frozen water, which explorers could use for life support. One NASA Goddard, planetary scientist involved with the South Pole analysis, said that one idea is to set up a camp in an illuminated zone and traverse into these craters, which are exceptionally cold. The temperature in most of these cold craters can dip to about minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 235 degrees Celsius. The initial plans of the agency outlong the landing of a spacecraft on a flat part of the lighted crater rim or ridge. If NASA aims to land on the flattest area possible without making the vehicle tip over, then they must find a way to land on a well-lit crater. The landing area should be specifically and ideally separated from other base camp features, including the habitat or solar panels, which must be at least half a mile or one kilometer away. It is also meant to be situated at a different elevation, which will further prevent descending aircraft from distributing high-speed debris and equipment or areas of scientific interest. Some scientists have quite estimated that as a spacecraft shoves its engines for a soft landing, it could well spread hundreds of pounds and kilograms of surface particles, water, and other gases across a couple of miles or several kilometers. A biochemical and industrial engineer for NASA, Ruth and Lewis, said, You want to take advantage of the landforms, such as hills, that can act as barriers to minimize the impact of contamination. So we're looking at distances, elevations, and slopes in our planning. The preparation involved with lunar exploration is by far just beyond designing and building a safe spacecraft and well-fitted spacesuits. NASA inclusively has to ensure that the surface vehicles and suites are fitted with the mobility required to do science. Furthermore, astronauts also must have the tools they need to identify and pick up rocks and soil samples. It's also quite important to sustain the area around the landing site and the base camp, and further reserve its purity. The Artemis base camp indeed has to be on the Earth's facing side of the moon to make it easier for engineers to communicate to astronauts on the moon via radio waves. Thank you for watching one of our videos. While you're still here, go ahead and click on one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!